Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 371 for Monday, January 30th, 2023. Greetings, folks. And welcome to or welcome back to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. Sponsor for this episode is Banzoogle, where you can go to banzoogle.com. You try it free for 30 days, then you use promo code GIGGAB to get 15% off the first year of your subscription. We'll talk more in depth about that a little bit later. For now, here, back here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. It's good to talk to you, Mr. Kent. I missed you in our. Uh, You're a world traveler, my friend. It, yeah, it was. Uh, it was an interesting journey, but uh, it was. It, Any cover bands? Um, I'm trying to think. We didn't wind up seeing any live music while we were there. There was one. It, it was. It was a really interesting, like serendipitous moment uh, with a street musician. We had decided that we would pick a day. While we were there, we were visiting our daughter and her boyfriend uh, who lived there. And we would pick a day to celebrate uh, Christmas with the five of us because it was my son and my wife and I that went over and, and you know, visiting them. So we picked this Sunday, a week ago Sunday to do this. A traditional Italian Christmas is you go out for lunch and you cook a meal at home. We had this great Airbnb. We were able to cook a meal together, which was so nice. Uh, we cooked a lasagna that was, that was just amazing. Um, we went out to lunch and we were walking back to our Airbnb from lunch. And there was a guy with a, an electric guitar in like this plaza in the street playing Christmas music on his guitar. Now it didn't seem weird to us cause we had just like celebrated Christmas that morning, you know, <laughs> but this was the end of January. So it was a little <laughs> weird, <laughs> uh, but it was serendipitous. He was playing Jingle Bell Rock on his guitar. <laughs> it was like, okay, I'll, I'll take the, I'll, I'll let the universe smile on this moment. That's great. So yeah, that was, um, was nice. It's an interesting area where we were. We were in a town called Murano, which is in the uh, Bolzano province, uh, the autonomous province of Bolzano, which is in Northern Italy. A hundred years ago, it was actually Austrian and uh, Italy convinced them to become part of Italy by giving them full autonomy. I, th I think they keep 90% of their tax revenue to use for themselves. And it, I think it's the, the wealthiest region of, of uh, Italy, but it's, it's, it's very German. Like German is the most common language spoken there with Italian being the second, which mm -hmm. made it weird because everywhere else I go in Europe where there's a different language spoken as the primary language, the secondary language has always been English. That was not the case in this area of the country. <laughs> so how'd you do communicating? We did fine. Most people there spoke English. It just was like, there were very few signs that had English on them because all the signs had German and Italian on them. Uh, so we, we leveraged a lot of, you know, the Google translate app and um, uh, you know, you, you, you make it through. It's, it's fine. We did fine. Yep. Yeah. Cool. But it was fun. Glad, yeah, it was good. Glad you had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, in new Orleans last week right. and um, you know, man, you are reminded about a lot of things about music when you go to New Orleans. Yeah. The breadth, the breadth and variety. Um, you often come in contact with chops that are kind of mind blowing, right? I mean, I I would say I I didn't go into any of the like tourist bars where there's where classic rock cover bands, you know, but I didn't do that. Right. But just like we went out to Frenchman Street and saw some jazz. We definitely saw some brass band music. We saw a couple of really interesting street groups that you can just set up in the street. And I don't know, you know, maybe maybe I'm on, on vacation, but it just seemed like the level of chops in general of what you would find was pretty good. Like, you know, all the people singing on the street, they have yeah. really, really good, you know, the brass bands are crazy, you know, great energy, you know, and they're playing for hours and hours and hours and that was great. And of course, you know, when you go out to like the locals area, that Frenchman street that, you know, those jazz guys can play. So yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a music it was, city. It I mean, I, you know, that it doesn't surprise me that, 
But I asked you this once before about Austin, about whether, you know, the chops level in Austin, and you said that there there were this similar levels of cover band chops that you see in most places. Well, yeah, percentage, I mean, there's some great musicians there, but but percentage wise in Austin, it's a, it's the same sort of mix that you see anywhere else. There's some crappy musicians. There's a lot of, you know, sort of middle of the road meat and potatoes musicians. And then there's the cream of the crop at the top of the list. And there's, mm-hmm. there's because there's more musicians there, there's more of the cream of the crop, but percentage wise, I think it's kind of all the same, but I, you know, I, I know I've told the story on this show before, but it's not rare to find a, a bum on the street who knows how to fix your hi-hat pedal in the middle of a gig. And, <laughs> and, and that happened to me as, as a guy literally leaned in the window while I was playing and uh, tapped my foot. Cause he saw my hi-hat was broken and, uh, and fixed it and then tapped my foot again. And was like, you know, give me the thumbs up. It was like, that's okay. a good story. Yeah, no, it was pretty cool. So I, I had, I had brought two beers on stage with me and I had them, to my right, because there was an open window to the street to my left. And I, so I put my beers and like my wallet and all my, my crap to my, you know, t- to my right for obvious reasons. And so I moved one of the beers to the left and uh, made it clear that I, I was no longer going to be responsible for whatever happened to that beer. If that guy wanted it, it was his, you know? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, but I mean like those kinds of things happen in, in Austin more than they would in, in other cities, I, 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 other non, other cities that are not known for their music. I would expect that kind of thing in new Orleans or Nashville or, you know, those sorts of places where, uh, there are a higher percentage of musicians around. So that's, that's great though. That you ran into some, that just sort of happened upon some fantastic music. That's good. Just so fun. That's great. I played a, uh, played a jet lagged gig with monkey fist yesterday. We flew home on Saturday um, dealt with some overzealous German security who wanted to see our papers, which was a little tone deaf on their part, I think. But uh, we made it home, and uh, and I played a Monkey Fist gig, an afternoon gig at Old Real Pizza yesterday afternoon. Our friend, that was the gig that I rehearsed for, uh, right, uh, right when we, I think, just uh, when we did our last episode before I left, or right, right after that, mm-hmm. and. Uh, it was with our friend Jim Richardson, who has never played guitar for Monkey Fist before. And that rehearsal was so good for us it, that the gig went, it was like butter, man. It, as I told Jim, he was pretty nervous because, you know, he knows that Monkey Fist is kind of a, a thing and, and we have a vibe that we're used to. And, you know, with just three people and really one guitar, he, you know, the guitar player sort of sort of sets the tone. I always say that the guitar player in an acoustic act is the drummer. I'm just playing along, but, uh, you know, we were three songs in and I turned to him. He's like, how do you think it's going? I'm like, well, feels like monkey fist, man. It's great. Like, you you know, it was comfortable and, uh, it was nice. He and he and Johnny D play in another band called, I think they call it blaming Abby together, uh, an electric, you know, full electric band. So it meant we brought in a lot of tunes that monkey fist has never played before, which kind of mixed it up for us a little bit, which was, which was great. Um, Johnny D he's got, he's great at that 90s stuff. I mean, he's great at just about everything, but he really shines, uh, singing all that 90s stuff. And, you know, the matchbox 20 stuff is great for him. Bare naked ladies is great for him. We wound up playing real world. The, the matchbox 22, mm-hmm. I, I can't, it's, it was the first time we ever played that in monkey fist in the, you know, decade plus that I've been playing with monkey fist. And I, like, as soon as we dropped into it, it was like, why have we not been playing great this song? It's a great, great song. Band, great song. Great we band. Play, great... We added horns to it. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I remember you telling me that. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. It's a great song. Really? Just, yeah. You know, it's. It, I was thinking about this, I, and I, this is an, an unfinished thought, so bear with me on this, but there's a different... I my approach to gigs is I find myself approaching them differently and thinking about them differently. If it's a cover gig versus a, uh, versus a gig with, you know, an, uh, an original band like bitter pill or with playing or whatever. And I don't know why that is. I mean, I, I have to like the, the performance aspect of it. I treat the same. It's, you know, I want to, 
play my best. I want to sing my best. I want to perform my best. I want to entertain. Uh, all of those things are the same, but for some reason, it's just a different vibe. And I don't want to say it's, I am trying, like I said, I'm, I, I haven't really fully formed my thoughts on this, but it, it, it there's, there's something about original gigs where I get where I feel like the stakes are higher um, just out of the gate. Like it, it and, and we talked about low stakes gigs and high stakes gigs, and you can have low stakes gigs with an original band and high stakes gigs with a cover band. Like all of that stuff is, is super interchangeable and, and applies across the board. But for some reason, there's something about the original gigs where like my approach to it is that the stakes are a little bit higher, uh, just, you know, all else being equal. Well, I don't think that, that that makes total sense to me Does because it? you're selling okay. something, you know, going in that you're, there are no, there are no sweet home Alabamas you right. know, that you can, you, you know, you're selling a new idea, original art. And so, you know, you, you gotta be on your A game to present it and have it go over. Right. So I, I totally, totally makes sense to me. Yeah, that's true. You don't have any escape valves, right? Right. Yeah. There's no, there's nothing in the back pocket that you can pull out and be like, all right, well, I can, I can salvage this one. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. I guess so. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll buy that for now. Sure. I'm in. I'm sold. Total sense. Yeah. 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 Did you play this weekend? I a couple things. So I did play a gig yesterday. Um, and again, as I've changed my mix of gigs, the number of pure solo things I do versus the combos versus the house rockers. So um, it just was a really nice rainy afternoon at a winery. Um, you know, X amount of the crowd stayed the whole time, which was a really good thing. But again, it was kind of like a hunker down type of day. Sure tipped really well huh. and i you know i'm really appreciate the chance to play whatever i want to play right yep that's really fun um but really also interesting for me is uh my combo that's down here in the new area where i live it's been a trio and it's been right. good i mean it's fine you know it goes over pretty well but i'm not a trio guitar player right so if i don't feel something really chunking underneath me it's hard for me to solo i wonder it sounds too empty yep i just don't think like a trio player and so i'm really oh, that's a tough that's a tough role to fill i i'm always impressed when i play with someone who really can embody that role in, a, in an electric sense i mean i played with murray woods for years in that blues rock trio and he crushed that role but it is it it requires a, a very specific approach but yeah all the things you said like you you got to you got to lay it down while you're also able to solo and like that. That's yeah, that's tough, man. I, it I was get a it. lot of stuff. Yeah. So, you know, in the be careful of what you wish for type thing, uh, someone, someone I went to high school many, many years ago happened to move down to this area where I live. And through the magic of Facebook, we reconnected and we went and had a drink and got reacquainted. And I remember him being a good player, Yeah. but you know, that many years ago, I'm purposely not putting the number in there. And um, uh, <laughs> uh, I said, you know, hey, here's a song list. Show up, sit in, you know, let's see how it goes. Uh, and he he did, and it was heaven. I mean, it was just so And, and this is a, a keyboard a piano player. player. Piano, okay, piano, piano player. player, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just so tasty, and he was really fun to play with. And um, just, you know, very melodic playing and just, it, it it turned something that was good into something that was really, really good. Yeah. And all of a sudden I'm feeling a lot more energized. Like, Oh yeah, I want to do that. You know, it was that fun. And so I have like a renewed interest. Like I'll take less solo gigs and like, you know, that group has about two and a half hours of, of uh, a little, maybe a little more repertoire ready to go. One of the gigs we do is a four hour gig. And so we'll do three sets and then I'll do a solo set as part of it. Oh. And, you know, that's a smart way I'm to getting, mix it up. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it works. I mean, it, it it works just great. And so I actually like this was so fun, and it added so much to the songs, and all of the soloing lifting was on my shoulders. Which again, I'm not that type of player. I like to take a solo every once in a while, but I get tired of hearing myself. You know, after you know after yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it it mixes it up for sure. Yeah. So yep. it was, that was really good. So yeah, that, that was my gig. And we got to play twice last weekend. Nice. So the first day was kind of like, just kind of big ears, you know, and then, but the second day was really great. And so that was super. 
And then next week, uh, no, uh, not this weekend, but next weekend, I have my regular date up in the Bay Area and a House Rockers date and get to get back together, you know, with my buddies up there. So I feel blessed that as I've scaled it back, the things that I've kept, one of them has gotten better. Yeah. And they all take on a, you know, much more valuable meaning to me. Yeah. You're, uh, you're starting in a sense, I hear you sort of experiencing what I experienced playing in multiple projects where it's like, you know, the, the heat gets turned up on one and down on another. Uh, but, but it just sort of flows and, and life, you know, life evolves. It's good. Well, it, it, it let me just qualify that. So sure. Um, I don't want the heat to go down on any of them. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I've pleasantly surprised that one has gotten so much more enjoyable through this, you know, one change. Um, I realize, you know, I'm, I'm adding a little more space into the system. And I, I think it's also, it's also different when like you get up and you get into booking mode a, if it's your income or B, if you're just like a competitive person to see how much you can book and, you know, you have the time and you want to stay as busy as you can. Remember, you know, my system is I block out a weekend for music down here. I block out a, mu- a weekend for music up there. So there's a finite amount of inventory now or as before yep. it was like book, book seven days a week if you can, just as much as you can. See if you can make a living out of music. And now it's like, you know, what are the ones that, cross the bar of a paying enough because I, you know, I want the people I pay with to, to get paid. Yes, of course. And, and then B, you know, that are places that I want to play. And in fact, the, the, my friend from high school, he actually said, you know, the two gigs we played, he goes, Oh, you play in, you play in nice places. And they were two really good gigs. So it's different. I mean, I don't want any of the projects to suffer. And, you know, I'm keenly aware that the out of sight, out of mind thing, you know, whenever I see someone, get a gig up in the Bay area that I would have usually been an earlier call for. And I see someone else getting it. I, you know, in my mind, I'm like, it eats at you, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, it's like, it's like they know I've moved away and they don't even think to call me. And that is something I gotta, you know, get comfortable with. So, but all in all, it's all quite, you know, and the thing I like best is the variety of stuff I get to do. It's, it's, it's all shades of different types of music that I love, you know, the house rockers with the big sound, and then these combos, you know, they they have a lot of overlap. That's by design, you know, the coffee house band and the winery band that I have. And then the solo stuff, I get to do my favorite singer songwriter stuff or, you know, some stuff that I just find, you know, that it, I enjoy. So there just is like this nice, rich breadth of stuff. And I get to do so much that I love. It's, it's really fun. There's that sound. That sound means I get to tell you about our sponsor, Banzoogle. And today, that means I get to say congratulations, Banzoogle members, for surpassing $100 million in commission-free sales of your music, merch, and tickets through your websites. It's true. All these Banzoogle members. Fling's one of them. The House Rockers are one of them. A lot of you out there are members of Banzoogle, too. And good news, if you're not yet... You can be, because Banzoogle makes it easy to build stunning websites and online stores for your music in minutes. They have all the features that you need built in, including dozens of fully customizable templates, tools to sell your music, merch, and tickets commission-free. Banzoogle's got mailing list tools to grow your fan list and send newsletters. They've got integrations with Bandcamp, SoundCloud, YouTube, Bands in Town, and more, so you can easily add content from your other online profiles. And they got live support from their musician-friendly team seven days a week. Banzoogle plans start at just $8.29 a month, which includes hosting and your own free custom domain name. And Gig Gab podcast listeners can go to Banzoogle.com to try it free for 30 days and then use the promo code Gig Gab, all one word, G-I-G-G-A-B, to get 15% off your first year of any subscription. That's Banzoogle.com, promo code Gig Gab, and you can be one of the people generating sales commission-free on Banzoogle. And our thanks to Banzoogle for allowing all this to happen and for sponsoring this episode. So I, I got an interesting scenario that I'm that I'm in the middle of right now, Paul, and and I I don't I don't know how it's going to uh, evolve. 
uh, we're playing, Fling's playing this gig on this coming Sunday, afternoon gig down in Boston. It's a multi-band bill. The, the, the lineup, Russ found this gig for us. He worked it all out. The, the lineup of like the mix of, of the different bands kind of fits perfectly. It's great. Uh, there's everybody plays a, uh, the headliner might play a little longer, but everybody else plays a 45 minute set with a 15 minute changeover. So an hour slot for each band. And, uh, Russ roped me in to sort of, uh, so that he didn't have to play middleman, uh, talking to the other, the headliner band about, uh, sharing a, a drum kit because with 15 minute changeovers, that's, you know, n- not really enough time to really do that. Right. It's better if you share a backline. I'm always fine with that, you know, especially for a, you know, a short one setter like this. So weeks ago before, certainly, you know, before I left for Europe, probably two, three weeks ago now, uh, I emailed who I thought was the contact uh, for this other band and just said, Hey, you know, Dave drummer from fling, I, I, you know, this, this band, uh, that's the headliner has almost like a residency there once every four to six weeks or something. And so I figured, okay, well, they'll, how does it work? Right. You know, let, let me know if you, if, if sharing a backline is the right thing, I'm totally into it. Happy to bring breakables, you know, all that stuff, just like being friendly, Dave. And then I realized, um, I hadn't heard back from them and that like two weeks went by. So I shot them a note before, before again, before I left for Europe. And then yesterday, so, you know, another couple of weeks, still nothing. So I asked Russ, I'm like, have you heard anything? He's like, no. I'm like, maybe I'm emailing email the wrong person. So I emailed everybody that's on the, like, on the gig. And uh, including the booking agent. And was just like, hey, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I'm assuming I'm emailing the wrong person. You know, what's the story with this? The booking agent replied almost immediately. They were like, yeah. Uh, you know, you, you, you probably would have time to change over, but sharing a backline is, is our preferred way of doing it. So, uh, yeah, you're doing the the right thing. And I replied and I'm like, can you confirm that the person who, you know, represents that band is on the chain? And she was like, yeah, 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 they're here. And so I have no idea what's going on, but you know, the clock ticks. It's Monday when we're Monday night, when we're recording this. So six days away, we're doing this gig and who knows, right? Like I have no idea why this person uh, isn't seeing my emails or isn't responding. They, I mean, something might happen to them. They might also be traveling. Like there's a million scenarios, but it's, it's getting to the point where it's like, well, you know, on Sunday morning, I gotta, I gotta know what I'm doing. And if that means bringing a whole other drum set down to Boston to do this gig, in a scenario that I don't think really works to have, you know, multiple drum sets bouncing on and off the stage. It's just a weird, I've never been in this scenario where you get zero communication. And and again, I, I, you know, I, I, it's frustrating, but I don't, I'm not blaming them at least not yet. Cause I don't know why they're not, why they're not communicating. Right. If they're not communicating because they want to avoid us, well then I'll blame them. But, but you know, it could be anything, right. It could be, you know, they're traveling or they're sick. I would, ask, I would ask the Booker guy, did did the Booker woman, but yes. Booker woman, Booker person, mm-hmm. um, ask if uh the uh, if he communicates with that other band by email. And like the yeah. they no, she know, can look she for can email. she confirmed that today. She's like, Oh yeah, everything's done with email. You know, you're you you've got the right yeah. people here. So it's like looks awful. It's weird. It's it's just I guess you, you know, know it's weird. It it's weird and it kind of takes on a life of its own. I, I would say like when yeah. I've been on multi-band gigs about different things, not too much about sharing. I mean, we haven't had too many where we've, we've had to share back lines, yep. but like asking to compare set lists. Oh, on like cover right? gigs. Sure. Festival gigs. Right. Yeah. Yep. You know, I'm tired of getting there and to be the fourth band of the, of the night to, to play uptown funk. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, so you yeah, know, that's and, a smart and, and thing I'll, to coordinate. Yeah. And just that, but, and I would say that I do find, and again, you start reading in your mind, like, what is the calculation going on here? Like, well, that, like, that's my delay? problem is I'm, I'm, you know, there, there's moments where I assume the worst, like, well, they're just avoiding us because maybe th- their drummer doesn't like to share his kit, but you know, he doesn't want to seem like a jerk. And like, I, I don't, but, that, but the problem is without communicating, 
I have no idea what's going on. If the guy doesn't want to share his with a woman, I don't know if it's, I think it's a guy drummer in this band because I've seen videos of them at this club. If he doesn't want to share his kit, well, just tell me that, you know, like, right. like that, that, that's a, that's a Make path. you drag a kit down to Boston and leave it in your car while you go do it. Exactly. Well, it's not going to be very cool. No. And, and, and we're deciding whether we're going to carpool to Boston or not. And, and so like that changes that calculus, uh, obviously, you know, it's, if I got to bring a whole kit, well, then I'm driving myself. So it's just a yeah. weird, it, it it's a, it, it, I am such an over communicator with things. And I know not everyone is, is as overly communicative as me. And I don't expect well, what is the that statute of, of limitations to good behavior is like that's the three thing. days, right. right? Three days, right? Everybody checks their mail every three days. Is that yeah, fair, exactly. to, fair to assume? Even if you're not a techie guy that lives on your email. Right. But if he gets, you know, gig offers, you know, by email, you're checking your email, right? This has been so, multi like many weeks. And have you, have you done like a, you know, yeah, we caps subject and, you know, like, Hey, I really need to hear about this. Um, I kind I haven't done that yet. What I, I figured by bringing in the Booker person and having them respond to the chain, maybe they, like they don't prioritize emails from Dave Hamilton because they don't know Dave from from Moses. But they definitely Would you are, even get to the point where you tell the Booker if I don't hear from this person, you know, and there's an expectation of sharing. I we we can't do the gig and let the let the Booker person get the attention. Yeah, well, that's sort of what I did was by getting them to reply to everyone. I figured, okay, this is going to, to bring it up to, to, to these people and they will see it, but it's been, you know, 36 hours now since that happened and they haven't seen it. We, we have, and then talked, when you come face to face with the person, there's just this weird yeah. vibe, right? Hey, you how just you want doing? To get in the mo yeah. <laughs> Thanks for not replying to me. Thanks. That was really polite of you. Well, um, and, and, and again, you know, I don't want to assume they're, I, I, I don't want to assume the worst, but at times I do because I'm a human being and I'm, I'm flawed, but again, it's, it's possible that there's a very legitimate reason why this person is unable to see their email or reply to me. Right. I mean, I, yeah. who knows, but it is creating a scenario that that normally and when I say normally, like I've never been in this scenario before where you haven't been able to communicate with bands. We even Russ even sent him a Facebook message, I think, you know, to like their band account. And we haven't heard anything from them. So it's just we may wind up deciding on Thursday that we are going to change gears for this gig and have Fling just play it acoustic because that way we're in control of everything. It, you know, it, it's we can we we bring all of our crap. We do our thing. We don't have to worry about whatever anybody else is doing. And the set list that I built for this gig, I actually built with that in mind. It can go either way. We can, you know, the songs that are on it, uh, there's actually, that's good. There's one, but, but crappy. You get, you're getting kind of forced into that corner where you have to make that decision. It's not that you're, you're making a, you know, cover your butt type of decision. Correct. Right? Oh, it's, it's absolutely a cover your butt decision. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which, which kind of sucks. It's just a weird, I'm, like I said, I've never been in this scenario before. So, um, it, it, it reinforces for me how important it is to communicate in those scenarios. Cause I, I've been there where it's, you know, especially if I've got a lot going on with work or whatever, I see an email about a gig that's in three weeks and it's like, oh yeah, I'll get back to this, it, you know, and then, and then it falls off the radar. Right. So I, like, I get it, it happens, but at some point you got to pick up those pieces and be like, Hey, sorry, yeah. you know, I'm here now and we don't want to share a kit. Okay, fine. Like, you know, so, cool, so, so if you get nothing from the guy, you know, and you go ahead and, and then you face to face with the guy, at the gig, what, what tone would you take? Uh, you know, it depends. You'd be like, dude, not cool. I don't know. It, it depends on, I, I, I'll be strategic about it. it. If it's a band that I want to, develop a relationship with because maybe there's, you know, something in it down the road, then I might not be a dick about it, but mm. uh, otherwise I, it depends on the mood. I, you know, I like, I, I have my, my on days and my off days. If it was yesterday after dealing with the freaking crazy <laughs> Germans that wanted to see my, see your papers, uh, I probably would have, uh, let the guy have a piece of my mind, you know, wow. again, not his fault that I got, you know, railroaded by an overzealous German authority figure, but you know, yeah. sometimes it happens. I, you know, so I don't know. I, it, it, I will, 
I will wait and see how much information I can get about this. Cause there might be a very legitimate explanation for it all. Uh, you know, things do happen, but it's just, it's a frustrating scenario where it's like, yeah. like you said, I'm sort of railroaded into this thing where it's like, yeah, we got to figure it out. Um, and it's a gig I'm looking forward to it. I, I would love to play it electric uh, with, you know, with full drums and all of that, but fling gigs work equally as well. Acoustics, uh, you know, when I bring my pitch slap and all of that, it's a different vibe, obviously, sure. but it, they, you know, fling songs really go over well that way. So it's, it's, it's not a, it's like, I will enjoy it either way. I just wish I could get the answer. So I guess at some point, probably sooner rather than later, I just got to make the decision Either I'm bringing my drums and we will use my drums, damn the torpedoes, or I'm not bringing drums and I won't be using drums. I will be using my pitch slap, damn the torpedoes. You know, it's going to be one of those either way. But In in my experience, like when I do this exercise, trying to get compromise on on, uh, song lists, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you can almost tell. I always think, you know, if someone delays the response, they really don't want to c- compromise. Is where my head goes to. Yeah. And often, you know, you find like, you know, my my proposal. I usually say this when I say, "Hey, just want to check set list, um, you know, with you, so we don't duplicate." You know, my thought is, is that we list the songs. You know, here's my set list. Can I see yours? And I always offer mine first. Um, and uh, uh, you know, then it's like a a fantasy draft. You know, I'll. I'll keep this one. Which one do you want? And you go back and forth and, you know, you see what, where there's compromise of these types of things. But I've had people say, no, that's a big number. No, no, that's a bit, you sure. know, they, and they want to yeah. get anything. Right. Yeah. That's my like, song. You know, right. Yeah, exactly. Your, yeah. your problem for, for playing after us. Yeah. Right? Well, there, and, I mean, there is that, right. You know, the, the, the band that plays first gets to decide what songs they're going to play and everybody else has to pick up the pieces after that, uh, you know, and sometimes playing pick up the pieces is a great song. That's a fun song. Uh, to play. <laughs> well played. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's a, um, it's be cool. frustrating. Like in all things in life, be cool, you know, be cool to other musicians, you know, there's compromise in everything. Communicate. It's like everything. I, I mean, well, well, and we, the thing we is, we wouldn't like, have a show if we didn't, if we didn't have to encourage people to communicate. With I guess them. that's true. That's true. But it's like, you know, we're playing a gig together. Like this is fun. This is where well, that's the other thing. We're like, entertaining. When I ask how you were going to be together. Exactly. Yeah. You know, to get, like, I always have this policy with every group I ever do, no drama the day of a gig. Like, even if guys aren't getting along, yep. people ticked at me, for whatever it might be, let's all agree. On on game day, we're there to, you know, deliver the goods, right? And so, you know, some guy, the lack of communication for you to do the basic things you need to do to do your job, you get face-to-face with the guy. I mean, I know me, how I'm wired, A, you know, if the guy doesn't quite quickly or girl quite quickly say, Hey, I was traveling or my wife had a baby, you know, or whatever yeah, it might th- be. Right. All those things that it could be. Sure. All those things that could be, uh, if they don't kind of own it, then I'm like, first thing in my mind is, well, that's a group I'm never going to, you know, go out of my way to work with again. And certainly I'm not going to refer any business to them. That's, you know, the first kind of fallback position I get in my mind. And then, you know, I try and remember my own words, not want to get too, testy about something um you know i think i told you one time we did a we did a gig uh and some band opened for us and they quite intentionally went over time right <laughs> like like they knowingly started another song after their time was after over. their cutoff and time. i was really ticked about it right yeah. really ticked and um like you know I had my stuff on stage, basically standing over the guy while he's trying to now tear down. And I said, you know, that was, that was BS, man. I, you know, and, you know, kind of fairly calmly, you know, it was like, that's not cool. And, you know, he started to lose his crap and like, you know, got in my face type thing. Oh. And, you know, it wasn't worth it, you know, no. for me to have even a moment lost in my gig. So, you know, it didn't accomplish anything. I'm not going to get in a fist fight over the thing. Yeah, so. of course. Yeah. 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 Some, some people might. Yeah. 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 No, I, I like this policy. No drama the day of the gig. I, I, um, I like it. I, I, I can't say that I'm, I'm good at that. Um, cause I care. I like, I, I, I want the gig to go well. So therefore I'm, I'm 
you know, on, on a version of an edge for any kind of gig. I mean, it's a performance. I, I, uh, you need to be able to focus and be on. And if I'm, if something's distracting me from that and I can't like ignore that distraction, then that's where the, the, you know, the drama comes from. Yeah, and, and sure. it, it, it's hard. I, but I, I, like, I agree with you. I like this policy. I just, I know that it's, it's yeah. not, I'm not great at, uh, N- nor at, am I. <laughs> no, I, I'm telling you what to do. I'm not telling you how to do it. Right, right, right. Yeah. Like, especially yeah, yeah, if yeah. you're wired, you know, like injustice or, you know, indignity. Well, that's the thing, has, isn't it? That's yeah. a way to creep into your, into your head. So I that, get it. That's my problem is, yeah, the injustice. I, uh, yeah, definitely. Be cool. Just be cool. But everybody needs to be cool. I, I, I hate it when it falls on me, Paul, to be like the I cool agree. one. That's and that guy's justice. being a dick. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, that's the part that fucks with me. I can't take it. <laughs> Dude, you, you're losing it here. See what I mean? I had to deal with the Germans. So I got to deal with these people. <laughs> <laughs> but it is like, that's the part. It's like, why do I have to be the, the, the adult here? I, you know, I don't know. That's the part that gets to me, <sighs> but I like the policy. No drama. The day of the gig. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do something to, to try and, and be that guy, the no drama guy. But I, you know, I hate it when it I, together, when, man. when I have to pay the price to do it, I, you know what I mean? Like it, in order to avoid drama, it means that I need to like stuff down. Yeah. 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 Well, or, or change like, like with this fling gig, you know, I, I got to change our set list so that we can play all acoustic, which we don't want to do. But if that's what we got to do, cause we have no idea what's going on and that's what we have to do. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I do. I, I, that's the injustice part of it that I got to figure out, but you know, well, you know, karma will, will kick it around again. And sometime that's true. She will be on the other foot, right? Yes. Uh, well, probably. Yeah, probably. No. Oh. So anyway, get all riled up about these things. Mm, sorry, man. No, it's good. It's good. To be, it's good. It's good. good. Well, it's me. I mean, like we care about this stuff. We want to put on good shows. That's what it is. That's what it is. I don't know. I know you do too. Like I, you're, you know, you and I, we, uh, we share that. We want to, we want to go out and perform. We want to entertain. Yeah. We want to leave them wanting more, all of those things, you know? So and anything that gets in the way of that, you know, depending upon a lot of things in your state of mind yeah. can take on undo, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Pros find a way and they, you know, work around any constraints and they, the show must go on and all that type of stuff, but it doesn't have to be that way. Like it just be cool. No. Just be cool. Just be cool. I remember when, yeah. uh, I, I was talking to um, the fiddle player. If the guy me. never calls back, you can definitely call him out on the show next week. How's that? Oh, I definitely will. That's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember out there in gig in gig gab nation, they will give this guy a piece of your mind. That's right. When I was talking to uh, the fiddle player from the Dave Matthews band, Boyd Tinsley, right after they had gotten signed and like were on their first tour that was label funded and or label organized and, you know, all of that stuff. And, uh, um, my friend Brad, uh, is also good friends with Boyd and that's how I got to know him and played on that record with him and all that stuff. And I, I'd, I'd met him several times before they sort of hit that level of things. And, uh, and I was hanging out with him after that. And I'm like, so, you know, what's it like? And he's like, it was weird to get used to. He's like, because now I don't take care of my, my own instrument anymore. There's a, there's somebody that does that. They tune it. They put it out there on stage. It's like, I just walk out, I grab it. Everything is set exactly right. And I just play. And he's like, it was really weird to, to, to sort of relinquish control of that. Mm. Uh, you know, he's like, cause for, for my entire career, I've been in charge of my stuff so that when I walk on stage, I know that, you know, to, to use the analogy, I packed my own shoot, right? Like when I pull the rip cord, I know it's going to work. And uh, he said, but the label, you know, sat all of them down and was like, look, you know, you are the only one that can go play those songs. You know, the, 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 the lot of you, the band, right? We can have other people worry about, are your strings right? Is this right? Are the drum heads right? All of those things. So we need you to be, completely detached from all of the drama so that when you walk on stage, you have no idea if there was some issue with the sound engineer or whatever, like 
you don't know because the problem. Foreign concept, right? The problem like, is solved for you. You just walk crazy. out and play. And, and, and that was the whole point was if you don't know, then you don't know. Like it's not going to impact your performance because. I wonder how long it takes, it takes to just give up the trust and just, you know, get it out of your head of anything that did, did they miss this? Did they miss that? He, I mean, he said it was, I asked him that question. I'm like, okay, so how long did it take? I'm like, are you there? He's like, yeah, I'm there. He's like, it really, it didn't take long. Maybe you know, eight, 10 gigs. He's like, ah. w- once I knew that I could trust this other person to do this job, well then why not just trust them to do this job? You know, they're hired to do it. They're paid to do it. If they don't do it well, they're fired, you know? <laughs> so, um, well, and yeah. you know, at, at my level, you know, I've got a bill and you know, once, yeah. when, once we got to that point where bill really owned the job and, you know, embraced the job, and you can walk in and the sound is set and, and the yeah. room is rang out and all that type of stuff. That is a pretty, you know, yeah. pampered feeling, right? No, and, and in Uptown, we have Dave, uh, not not me, Dave, Dave, uh, or Albetsky, our sound guy. And uh, and it's the same thing. Like every other band I play in, I worry about the sound. That band, no. I just, so I, I do have to set up my own drums. But, you know, other than that, it's like, I know it's going to be good. I don't worry at all. And so, I like, I get it. Um but it is, you know, it's different when it's like your instrument that you're going to yeah. like grab and play and you got to walk out and there's, you know, thousands of people out there and you, it's just, you trust that it's going to work. And, but yeah, he's like, amazing. he's like, you know, once, once it's worked enough times, it's like, yeah, of course, good to go. <laughs> so it'll be interesting this gig on Sunday. I'll report back. Um, but I'm looking forward to playing it regardless of, of whether we do it, you know, with a full kit or acoustic or whatever. It's, well, I hope uh, the dude steps up and everything gets cooked. Yeah, I hope I hear from him. I hope day. he's okay. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, I, like, I hope it's not. Well, some, I mean, I think the booker would have heard something if there was, you know, one, something going on. One right? would assume. From the rest of the band. One yeah. Would yeah. One would assume. Well, good luck. Thanks, Report man. Back. I will. I will. Thanks for hanging out with us, folks. Uh, feedback at giggabpodcast.com if you have any thoughts. Uh, if it's you. Send me an email, feedback at giggabpodcast.com. Let me know if I can use your drum sound someday. And even when the guy doesn't return your call, yeah, man. always be performing. That's right.